What's up, YouTube? It's Donovan the Smartphone Guy here to do a first impressions video of the Le, Le Echo Le Pro 3. So that's kind of a mouthful to say. But anyways, uh, this is a smartphone that's been out for a little while. There's a ton of videos out there for it. Um, check out some some of my uh, some guys that I like to watch. My Project 13's done a ton of videos of this uh, phone. Also, J. Will. Um, but some awesome videos out there that you can get some first impressions and uh, really some very in-depth reviews uh, on this phone. So I had to try it out for myself and I wanted to share my experience. So far, I've only had this for literally a few hours, um, but I wanted to give you my first impressions and just kind of run over some of the specs. And I'm sure if you are watching this, you probably already know the specs, but I just want to share them anyways, just in case uh, this is your first time at this channel. So first of all, if this is your first time with this channel, please, please, please subscribe to it. It helps out a ton. So let's talk about some of the specs that are in the box. So 5.5 inch full HD display, 403 PPI, the most recent Snapdragon processor, the 821. And by the way, I should mention that I picked this up for uh, just under $300 on Swappa. And uh, earlier today, you could get it for $300 um, on uh, the website for La Echo. So anyways, uh, with that being said, um, this one comes with 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage, um, and uh, 16 megapixel rear camera and let's see, eight megapixel front facing camera. And then it does have NFC and that huge battery is very nice. So 4,070 milliamp hour battery that also comes with Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0 and uh, this Dolby Atmos. So there's actually two speakers on this phone. So we have a speaker here and a speaker down here as well as a microphone. So that's pretty cool. So you get the dual front facing sort of, it's kind of like HTC in that regard because HTC had that going on where they had a bottom firing speaker and uh, the, the front firing speaker at the top. Um, so kind of like an HTC 10 in that regard. Um, but yeah, so I mean, it's just crazy what you get for $300 for this one. So the regular price is 400, but every week they've been doing these uh, instant rebates uh, where they call them flash sales and you can get them for uh, $300 this phone um, and anyway so just I mean what you're getting for $300 to me is just kind of mind-blowing honestly um, so I just want to go over some of the things you get with it so this is a type C phone so I could, I'm actually charging it right now because um, I've been kind of running a bunch of updates on it and things like that. Um, so it does come with these type C, uh, headphones that are also a type C adapter here. Um, because there is no headphone jack on the phone. We have our monstrous, uh, Qualcomm 3.0 fast charging, uh, adapter here, uh, type C cord here. It did come with this little clear case and I didn't get mine brand new actually. So I guess you know, I can't say for certain that it does. Um, I don't know if these come with it, um, but they came with mine, so you have to tell me. Those of you that got it brand new from the La Echo store, um, did it come with those screen protectors? Did it come with a case? I'm pretty sure it came with a case, but um, yeah, I'm not sure about the screen protectors. Um, mine actually came with a tempered glass screen protector, um, but I don't think that obviously is something that comes in the box. So the box itself, I mean, Gosh, they, they definitely put some time and effort into this thing. Um, definitely feels very quality. Um, so the phone itself, um, obviously the build is something that we've come to recognize. Um, seems like just about every company is coming out with this all metal build or something similar to it. Um, but this one is a nice one. It's, it's you know, nothing amazing. Um, but as far as an all metal build, got that on there still. Get rid of that plastic. All right, so... Um, definitely kind of a brushed metal feel to it. We got, of course, our fingerprint, which is almost like mirror-like. We got our dual flash in the back, 16 megapixel, and we got our antenna bands down here. We got our microphone and speaker, Type-C charging. Um, this is kind of cool. This is something that I thought was cool that I, as I've been messing with it. So you get the power button and you swipe up, and it can tell which finger you've used so that it does one-handed mode. Because watch what happens if I swipe up with this hand now. And now it's on this side. So that's kind of cool. So, I mean, obviously, for the most part, you're probably going to use the fingerprint sensor, but um, it's kind of cool that it has that option or that they even thought about the fact that some people might not use a fingerprint and therefore they have that option. So you can see that it does have capacitive uh, buttons down here that are backlit. Um, so we have our home button, which has a little LE, La Echo, um, 
home button there. We have our back button and our recent apps button. We do have a camera uh, quick toggle there. And uh, just from my perspective, this is just you know a quick first uh, glance at the the uh, quality of the camera. I would say it's not too bad, really. I mean, I, I've I've seen some reviews that said it wasn't all that great. Um, in my opinion, not too bad. I mean, I've been using a lot of budget phones recently and I've been reviewing a lot of budget phones, so the competition isn't very stiff in, in that regard. Um, but it's actually not too bad of a camera from my perspective so far. Obviously, I'll do a more in-depth when I do a final review of this phone and maybe I'll even just do some uh, some straight up camera reviews. Um, but so far, the camera doesn't seem too bad to me. Um, this is kind of interesting. Uh, so this is the native um Ooh, Donald Trump right there on the front. Um, so anyways, this is, uh, if you swipe over to the left, it's kind of like we get uh, almost like a flipboard here um, to the side or, you know, Samsung has their own version. HTC has their own version. Uh, so it's kind of like that, um, just kind of some recent things. And you can obviously change those. You can change it in the settings, what kinds of things you get in there. I haven't adjusted that at all, so that's just what it comes with. A um, bunch of product productivity apps that it comes native with. Um, we have some tools that are, you know, specific to the La Echo ecosystem here. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, a lot of a lot of bloatware for uh, a phone that's GSM unlocked. You know, typically you get unlocked phones, you think you're going to get a little bit less bloatware. This one comes with a little bit more. Um, some of them are kind of cool. Some of them not so ex exceptional. So we have this like live one here. Um, which is kind of cool. This actually gives you some live TV options. So you can go through and uh, flip through some of the live options here. And uh, there obviously is the history. So this is actually playing this movie right here. Hard candy, apparently. So, yeah. Not a uh, movie that I've downloaded or anything, but you can just go right in there. Or there's also this app, which I believe is pretty much the exact same thing from what I can tell. It has all the same movies. Uh, we want to watch something about Bruce Lee. And uh, just a bunch of free um, videos that are available and TV shows and things like that that you can watch that are just kind of native on here. It's kind of weird um, in a way, but it's there and it's available. So that's, I don't know, cool, whatever. Um, so these are some of these apps I've put on there, like YouTube Studio and AdSense and things like that. Um, but yeah, so there's there's a decent amount of bloatware in there. Um, let's go ahead and go into, uh, so that actually is uh, different. That That's a little different, um, something I'm not used to, um, something that you're going to, I'm going to have to get used to, and then it has a notification management down there. Um, so in the settings, uh, definitely, you know, it's definitely a change from stock Android. It's It's certainly not a stock feel. Um, we have some display options in here. So we got some color mode, scale mode, um, video display enhancement. So we can we can adjust a lot of things in there. And we have adaptive brightness, which is pretty standard, I think, with most phones. Um, we have some personalized options. So the EUI is the system that it comes with. And it has a couple other um, themes there. And then there's some online themes that you can download as well. Uh, control center. So we can... Um, put some options in the control center. So that's kind of interesting. Um, if you're here and you come over here, you can see the control center options, which is kind of interesting. So it has the recent apps, but then also it has this command center control center, which normally you would just swipe down for that. But with this phone, you have to actually hit that button, which is kind of weird, but um, I don't know. Something you can get used to, I'm sure, after a while. Um, I'm already kind of used to it. And, you know, we just have our quick toggles there. Um, not something I'm used to, but hey, you know, it is what it is. And uh, down here, it's kind of nice because it actually shows you how much um, RAM you're using, which is kind of nice. Um, but anyways, going back into the settings, let's see what we got here. Some do not disturb, dual app mode. Um, so that is, I'm not even sure. That's something I'm going to have to look a little bit more into. I haven't really looked into that one much. Um, we have a little cloud, so that's um, some cloud storage, whoops, um, in there. The fingerprint sensor so far has worked really well, and they give you some options for using the fingerprint sensor for app lock, privacy lock, uh, some screen lock options. Um, you can use it as a shutter for your camera, which is kind of cool. Um, or I guess that's right here. Um, but yeah, just some various options that you you know don't necessarily get with uh, some other phones. Um, but other than that, it's pretty standard in here from what I can tell. 
Um, I don't actually notice any gestures. So if I'm missing the gestures, somebody help me out there um, because I haven't seen any options for any gestures anywhere like in the display or anything like that. Um, so if there's like a double tap to wake, that would be fantastic, but I haven't found it if there is one. So anyways, my first impression, and I do want to, before I, um, I guess, finish this video, I do want to give you guys just a quick listen to the um, speaker um, because I do think that the the speakers are something worth note noting because they are pretty darn good. I mean, I'm actually going to do a speaker comparison with a phone like um, the Alcatel Idol 4S. Um, but let's go ahead and go into a song that I know is like a duty-free song here. Um, so that's pretty quiet right there. So it definitely has like the higher end speaker phone um, speaker for a phone, no doubt. Right about now, I kind of wish I had the Axon 7 Mini still. That way I could compare, but from my perspective, just as a first glance, it does seem like it's on par with an Axon 7 um, in terms of speaker quality. So that's definitely a huge thumbs up. And to me, this phone is really built for entertainment. That just, it just, it feels like as I'm using it, it just feels like it was built for watching Netflix and, uh, you know, things like that, Netflix and chill, listen to some music, whatever. It just feels like it was built for that. Um, so right now for me, I just think this for $300, if you are looking for a new phone that's unlocked, um, you don't want to be in a contract, man, I just can't see how there's a phone that really beats this price point at $300. Now for $400, I think there's some other phones you can get. Um, the new one plus three T just came out. Um, we also have the new, uh, well, the Axon 7, of course, uh, the old OnePlus 3. There's some phones definitely that compete with it and maybe even beat it at 400 But at 300 when you can get it on that flash sale, I don't know that there's a phone out there that you can get with the kind of specs and the just the quality you get with this phone. Now, there's some things you'll have to deal with, you know, with the Echo ecosystem there. But... Gosh, I think it's worth it for 300 bucks. This is just a fantastic phone. So anyways, this is so far first impression is this is a big thumbs up for me. Um, but I will be, do a little bit more in depth over the next couple weeks. Um, but thanks for watching and uh, hopefully you subscribe to my channel already so that you can see some updates on this phone. But I will see you all in the next video. Peace.